The dark-eyed junco, slate-colored junco, a Wisconsin overwintering bird, a seasonal migrant, and you'll never believe where I went to photograph them. Perhaps we're already growing weary of hearing that we live in unprecedented times. But while sheltering at home during the COVID-19 pandemic, I took advantage of an unexpected April snowstorm to photograph a favorite bird from the luxury of my kitchen. This was a maneuver I had practiced from year to year as a teacher during snow days, as I had made some of my most dynamic images while taking breaks from curriculum and grading during spring snow days, where snowstorms belted my deck with waves of snow and birds frantically foraged at my feeder. Other than making good chew toys for my dog, what do all of these pieces of wood have in common? Well, I've used them all as a bird photography studio, and this video is gonna be just about that. The dark-eyed junco is one of North America's beautiful native sparrow species. They're hardy birds that overwinter at 45 degrees north latitude, making the Great Lakes region their version of flying south. They breed sparingly in Wisconsin, mostly a breeding bird of the northern boreal Canadian forests. In late winter and early spring, juncos really start piling up in Wisconsin, ready to leap off on a northward flight at the first sign of stable weather. Our March and April snowfalls are prime times to photograph juncos. I just love them, each bird adorned with subtle and unique marks of personality. Males are deeply slate colored and females are lighter in tone with more pink or rust coloration. Sometimes we get lucky and we get a pink sided bird of a more western genetic population. Unexpectedly, I can see a bird of the Rocky Mountains hopping around my Wisconsin yard. As a photographer, I find them delightful, but challenging. That subtle pink beak demands subtle light. Soft light allows me to grab the exposure that ranges from the darkest slate colors to a bright white. I prefer overcast, cloudy, or early morning light for this species. Midday light is just too harsh and too difficult to work with. So juncos are ground foraging birds. This means that photographing them in a natural condition is very challenging, as they're very mobile birds and laying prone on the ground doesn't give that many opportunities for getting close enough for an eye level shot. Hanging around under a bird feeder works, but then every image has sunflower seeds everywhere, and that's just not attractive. To get junco images that have punch, I use a studio to bring the ground up to eye level. I carefully construct a studio that entices birds in to feed on nutritious black oil sunflower seed, but then conceals the seed from view. Nothing makes this studio work more perfectly than a well-timed snowstorm. As the snow falls over the surfaces and lightly covers the seed, everything becomes pure, natural, and pleasing to the eye. Dark-eyed juncos are a really good candidate for this kind of photography with a studio because they're ground feeders. They spend a lot of their time kick scratching around underneath bird feeders. So when I set up this log with leaves up on my deck rail, basically I'm making another ground. Although instead of having to lay on the ground outside, I'm able to get down at ground level or below ground level from the comfort of a chair in my kitchen. When you're working with studio type shooting, one thing you wanna make sure is that you don't burn out the same perch. You should have a shopping list of perches to grab and you're going to make a couple images on one perch and you're going to like that, but you're going to want to move on because if you make all of your pictures from the same perch, then all your pictures are going to look the same. It doesn't matter if you switch birds. So switch up your perches um, and as the lighting changes and as your perches change, your opportunities change, you'll make a lot of different images. Uh, another tip as well is to keep your perch near natural vegetation. I know that's not always possible if you're working a bird feeder uh, or, or a deck, but I have lilac bushes right next to my deck and I work the lilac bushes as much as I work the studio that I've made. So enjoy the opportunities that you can create by switching up perches, by taking advantage of changing conditions from snowstorm to sunset, and making sure that you take advantage of the opportunities of the natural vegetation 
nearby. By putting your studio and your feeder near to the natural vegetation, you'll increase the number of opportunities that you have to make great images. Another consideration is that you can actually use front cover to hide things like bird seed or orange halves from the background. So my birds, for example, are landing on dead leaves and then hopping up to a piece of dead wood. But what we see in the middle is what we don't see. I've got a pile of sunflower seeds stashed there and that's what the birds are after. So when you're setting up your, your bird photography home studio, you wanna make sure that you're setting it up in a regular bird feeding station so the birds are accustomed to arriving. A lot of times, pictures of birds on bird feeders just aren't what we're after. And um, similarly, check out these house finch pictures. Here's a picture of one dining on my deck table. And here's another picture of one actually at the studio. And you can see that there's a real big difference in terms of how the, the picture renders. One is a documentary picture of a bird with some bird seed. The other is actually a really nice isolated artful shot of the bird in a behavior. Photographing juncos requires attention to behavior. Most of the time, juncos will sit over a favorite pile of seeds and crack away, chewing with busy mandibles and offering no photographs at all. But juncos actively kick scratch for seeds and they will spar for territory. There are many exciting but fleeting moments in the junco studio. When sheltering in place, staying safer at home amid the COVID-19 pandemic, I encourage you to build a bird photography studio outside a kitchen window, on a deck, or someplace close to home. Mimic nature as closely as you can, keeping the elements natural but visibly clean. Be sure the studio is at eye level, or even slightly above eye level. By keeping the background very far away, the subject bird will have visual punch. Keep the bird's well-being in mind. Place the studio as close to natural cover as you can. Place your studio, if you can, in subtle light or good light. But avoid harsh light and avoid places where you're going to have shadows concealing the birds or be working in difficult latitudes of f-stops. My deck faces west, and that's great, except the house blocks the morning sun for most of the morning. My deck is also uh, facing right into the setting sun. So my deck is not ideal as a bird photography studio. However, I'm sitting comfortably at my kitchen table with my camera focused out on a bird photography studio. During the COVID-19 pandemic, you can make beautiful bird photography from your own yard.